Atlanta has a rat problem. But don't worry, because Return of the Living Dead's Miguel Nunez is on the case. He's an exterminator who takes an after-hours call and gets more than what he bargained for as he's eventually swarmed and consumed by an army of rats. Now, let's break this down for a second. First of all, the movie promises rat vision, which, okay, I'm on board with that. However, that's actually part of a bigger problem that'll permeate through the rest of the film. There are these digital editing effects that low-budget movies tended to suffer from around this time, and they're always terrible. And in this case, they're seemingly being applied at random. Meanwhile, a local slumlord has been sentenced to 30 days at his worst property, which I guess became a thing after the big Joe Pesci hit the super. In the basement of this building is where our main character Max and his brother Courtney live. But more importantly, Ice-T is here as the slumlord's enforcer, collecting rent from the poor tenants. She worst nightmare. Stop it, Stop it Joey! Goddamn dog. Mean people don't taste good in it. Y'all got the money. Uh, you know you made our due date a day before our social security checks arrived, just so you can collect the late fee every month. We've been living in this building over 35 years, and we ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you ain't going nowhere. You think this is a game? You've been late for rent every month for 35 years. Let me tell you something. If you do not have the money by tomorrow, are y'all gonna be outdoors? Try that pitching tents around this motherfucker, okay? I don't bullshit. This is my job, man. I finally got a job. I'm not fucking up. Max makes friends with one of the many rats that lives in the building after rescuing it from a rat trap. He names it Tara, which was the original name of the film until someone in marketing had an idea. Life is then very tough for everyone in the building for the next hour of the movie until after a very specific series of tragedies, Max commands his rat friends to exact revenge. Something tells me this did not start life as a killer rat movie, or if it did, it was enhanced in post with that opening scene and some other random gratuitousness, because the bulk of this is just a life sucks in this apartment building slice of life experience. If you're creeped out by rats being on people, there's a bit of that here, but the bulk of the more terrifying bits are all CG rats. It's a film that's lost in any genre you try to put it in, and as I said, the editing effects are atrocious. Without random bits of iced tea here and there, Hood Rat would be a completely forgettable experience. Now, here's another rat movie, but one where the film's sense of style actually makes the movie instead of impairing it. 1984's Rats Night of Terror from a uh, prolific Italian director Bruno Mattai features an opening crawl that has a lot to unpack, but I'll simplify. It's after the apocalypse and there's two groups, the super smart people who stayed underground and the dumbass primitives who went up to the surface to wander around. But I'll simplify it even further. It's after the apocalypse and there's this fabulous biker gang. I mean, look at these people. You've got Mohawk Guy, Sexy Zorro, they've got weird guns, they're all just weirdo fabulous. The group starts scouting this building and finds a huge cache of food and supplies. Normal scavengers after finding a windfall like this would load up those trucks they parked outside and move on. But for some reason they stay, you know, for a night of terror. Let's see. I'll make you pregnant. If you can make that thing work. What? This is very much a biker movie of the 60s and 70s at its core, which isn't a compliment. You've got this group of assholes taking control of a location, touching everything, smashing everything, being rapey and weird, all the usual stuff. Throw in the post-apocalyptic setting and you've got something you've probably seen a dozen times or so now. But then there's the rats. This place is absolutely infested with rats. They're everywhere and they're scheming. Although the scheme usually ends up being load everyone up into a big bucket and then have a crew member dump that bucket onto a cast member's head. Rat's Night of Terror isn't for the squeamish, but if you're able to survive the rat attack scenes, there's a lot of fun to be had here. That Italian goofiness is here, from the fantastic dubbing, to the style, to the general WTF-ness of everything that's happening. These films always seem to exist in another universe. Same as if you hurry. I'm sorry, what's happening here? One thing you're not going to see in the end credits is any kind of disclaimer that no animals were harmed during the making of this film. Shot after shot features actual rats being thrown, stepped on, etc. I mean, if I ever saw a rat, I'd absolutely murder it dead. But I wouldn't record it for the entertainment of others either, so just be prepared for that. Something you're not going to be prepared for is the ending, which, while bad, is one of the greatest, dumbest things you'll ever see. A laugh out loud moment if there ever was one, and it's yet another thing that makes me recommend Rat's Night of Terror. Mm -hmm.